Hello, I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire, and I am really excited because I have a lot to share with you today. Not only do I have lots of cards, but I have lots of tips and techniques. And I have two new tools that I think are really awesome and a hack for lining up your images. Really, I have pretty much everything covered today, everything from stenciling to inking to die cutting to stamping and more. So I'm hoping that you enjoy this longer video because it's packed full of ideas. Also, this video is part of a video hop for Altenew, so be sure to check out information on that below, including big giveaways. Before we get started, I wanted to mention that I'll be using these trays in today's video, and I wanted to mention what they are now because I know I'll get questions. These are Spellbinders craft stacks. They're trays that actually have a little lid that pops on, and they're easy to stack. They're great for organizing your die cuts. You know I've tried many systems over the years, and I like many of them, but this is a newer option that is great because they're shallow, so perfect for projects that you're working on. So I'm just mentioning this now because you'll see me use them throughout the video. Okay, let's jump into our first card. On this card, I show you an easy way to get kind of shadows and highlights on your colored die cuts. And we'll be doing a second card using the same products, but giving it a look of succulents instead of flowers. I'm using a new Altenew die set that has that keyhole system that is fantastic. The keyhole system shows you exactly how to line up your layers. So there's no guesswork involved, no trying to figure out how to position them on top of each other. You just line up the little keyholes that the dies create. And there's little numbers so you know what order to arrange them. Now in this die set, you have two large clusters of dies there for two large flowers. Then there are a bunch of leaves and the words hello, thanks, and the shadow dies. I'll be using the hello on this first card and then I'll use the thanks later on in this video. I mentioned earlier that there are two new tools I'm excited about. Well, the first one is this new large ultra sticky mat from Altenew. Now this is similar to the ultra sticky mat that comes in their stamp wheel. However, this is a bigger size, it's nine by 12. So it's great to kind of cover your work surface as you're doing inking, doing stenciling and more. Now keep in mind there are lots of great sticky kind of mats like this out there. The reason I was particularly excited about this is because of the bigger size. And what's nice about it is the back side of it isn't actually kind of solid, it has like a grid to it, like a texture grid that you can feel. So when you place it onto your glass work surface or your desk, it sticks to it, but it doesn't like suction to it so hard that it's hard to peel off. So it's easy to move, but it doesn't move as you're working on it. Now the side facing the camera is super smooth and you can see that's holding my die cuts and my ink pad in place. And you'll see later that it'll hold stencils in place. Now this is made of the same material as a clear stamp, so you know how much stick is to it, and I find that the more you use it, the better it sticks. And you could easily clean it with a gentle soap in the sink, but I usually just use a wet cloth. So on this sticky mat, I have my die cuts that I cut all from the same color of cardstock. But the lower die cuts, the bigger ones that'll be at the back, I added some darker ink to, to make them look a little more sh like they're a bit of a shadow on them. Then I left the middle size one just plain cardstock. And then those that'll be on the top of my layering, the tiniest die cuts, I added a bit of cloud white pigment ink so it looks like it's highlighted. I'll talk more about that in a moment, but now I'm going to layer these die cuts together. See how there is a keyhole cut in all of these layers? All you need to do is glue them together so that those keyholes line up. Don't worry, there'll be die cuts that you put on top that will cover that hole. But this takes the guesswork out. It's also hard to see, but the die makes an impression of a number. Like there, there's a little three next to the keyhole. I knew that was the third layer. And this one here will be the fourth layer. And then you can add the little die cuts on top. There is a key that comes with these dies. So if you want to see how they layer, you can look at that, but you really don't need to thanks to the keyhole system. This is something that Altenew has been doing more of and I really appreciate it because you can get that beautiful layered look with very little effort. So you can see this one covers up the keyhole and then you have one more to add on top. So what I did earlier with the inking is I added darker color to the back layers and lighter color with a white pigment ink to the top layer. 
Now with the white pigment ink, I didn't want it to be too bright white. So after I applied the ink, I did wipe a little bit of it away with a dry cloth. And look at how you get this great shadow and highlight look, but I only used one color of cardstock. Now let's use the dies to create a bigger flower. And what's cool is you can create two types of flowers with this one die set. The first one has lots of layers. So here I've cut two pieces of each of the layers. You can see there's one row on top and one on the bottom, they're duplicates. I'm putting dark ink on the bottom layers, leaving the middle layer plain, and the top layer I have white pigment ink added. Now this time I'm going to take these two die cuts and I'm going to rotate one just 180 degrees and then line up the little hole. And you can see how that even though it's the same die cut because I rotated one, I got extra layers out of it. Okay, so let's put down the middle one here lining up that hole. Then take the next die cut which is the same shape but turn it 180 degrees and press it down. And again, we're building up the layers to get a really full flower. Now you could skip the additional layers here and that's what I'll do with my next flower so you can get a comparison. But notice how they really did a great job designing this so that with that one die set, you can create this really full flower. And you can see by adding the darker ink to the base uh, layers there and then the lighter white ink to the top layers, you get that shadow and highlight look. You could add more dark to the bottom, even use like a gray ink on that color cardstock to make really deep shadows if you want. But I wanted to go for more of a brighter look here. Now for this flower on the right, I'm going to do some coral colors. This time I'm only using one of each die cut. And this will give us a less full flower, but another great option from the same set of dies. So you can see how the sticky mat is holding our die cuts in place as I ink them, which is really handy. It also will hold my ink pad in place. And later I've got a really cool trick that you can use this uh, sticky mat with to make sure you line things up straight. It's really handy. So stay tuned for that later in the video. Okay, so here are the three flowers that I created with this die set. Keep in mind you could even make additional smaller flowers by skipping some of the bottom layers, but I wanted three big flowers this time. Now cleaning up this sticky mat is easy. I just use a wet cloth. You can also use a, like soapy water to clean it off, or you can use a stamp cleaner if you've got a stubborn ink. But really, a wet cloth does the job. Now here I have cut some leaves from a light green, a medium green, and a teal color cardstock. And I'm making it look like I have even more shades of each by adding darker ink to some of the leaves and the white pigment ink to other of the leaves. So it looks like we have light, medium, and dark of all these different options. So this is a great hack for really coming up with different shades of the same color without having to search for lots of different cardstocks. Notice how easy it is to peel the sticky mat away from your glass work surface and all of the die cuts pop off easily. Now that my flowers and leaves are done, I need to do a background. I couldn't decide between two embossing folders. This first one is called the Farmhouse Florals 3D Embossing Fol Folder. And I thought I'd cover the flowers on that folder up with these die cut flowers. So it just looks like leaves coming out. But in the end, I decided to go with the other embossing folder, which is the Natural Wicker Pattern 3D Embossing Folder, because I had a technique idea I wanted to try with it. So I've opened that embossing folder and I'm lightly applying the cloud white uh, white pigment ink from Altenew. Any white pigment ink would work here. And I'm just applying some to the inside of the folder. I then have like a paper bag or craft cardstock and I'm placing that inside. I'll run this through my die cut machine following whatever your manufacturer's instructions are for a 3D embossing folder. I'm using my Empress machine and for that I just skip one of the cutting plates and that sandwich seems to work for me. Now when this comes out, that white pigment ink will be pressed into the indentations just allowing that pattern to stand out even more. Now you can stop there if you want, but I thought I would repeat the process just to intensify that white. 
So again, that white ink is getting pressed into this uh, embossed image and it just makes the pattern stand out even more. Now, if you didn't want to highlight with the white pigment ink, you could instead use like a brown ink and it would make those areas darker. Totally up to you what um, version you want to do, but I really like the look of wicker of this background using that craft cardstock and the white pigment ink. I trim that down and I'm adding it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. And then I can add my flowers and leaves on top of it. I chose to use the Hello die cut from the same flower die set, but I thought I'd stamp a greeting on the inside of the card. This is the all new Elegant Tulips set. Now there's a stamp set, there's a die, and there's coordinating stencils. Look at this beautiful image. You can use the stencils with or without the outline stamp image. But what I really liked in this set is that there are gorgeous sentiments in there. By the way, the stencil set also includes like an extra lattice stencil, which I think is fantastic. I'm a big fan of these stencil sets that are really well thought out. They color in the image or could be used separately, and there's the bonus lattice. But in this card, I'm just going to use one of the sentiments on the inside of the card. So I stamp sending you a bouquet of hugs. Now the hello die cut on the front, I used white cardstock for the shadow and black glitter cardstock for the hello just for a bit of sparkle. I also used the new all to new clear enamel dots which are nice because they're not too bulky but they add interest to the card and I scattered those on the background. So here you can see the shading and the highlighting that we got using darker inks and white pigment inks. It looks like I used a bunch of different colors of pink and purple cardstock, but really I only used three and added the ink. By the way, the envelope that's a perfect match to this is new from Altenew. I'm so excited about this because Altenew now has colored envelopes that match their line of inks. I really like to use colored envelopes with my cards. I feel like I spend a lot of time on my cards. It's nice to put them in a nice matching envelope. Now these are all the colors that they've come out with. You can always pause the video if you want to see what in an individual color is. But all of these colors are great because I have more options for finding just the right match for my card. I'm honestly most excited about Coral Berry because I haven't been able to find a coral colored envelope in the past, so now I've got it. Here's a look at what the envelope's like. You've got the little sticker seal on it, which I really like, and the little rounded corners on the flaps. So I wanted to let you know about that. I'll be showing these envelopes throughout this video, and you'll definitely see me using them a lot in the future. And look at all these beautiful envelopes. They do come in individual color packs where there's multiple envelopes in a pack, so I'm off to buy more of those. All right, now let's go on to our next card. I'm going to do something a little different here using the same die set. I thought those flowers could also be used to create the look of succulents. So that's what I've created here, where you have a green or kind of bluish color succulent with the pink tips, which happen to be my favorite type. I use the same die set, but only the dies that create the larger flower. And I cut from green, light green, and this kind of teal color cardstock. Now this time I am adding white pigment ink around the edges of all of the layers. You can see I put a pretty good amount of white pigment ink down and then I'm using a cloth to just kind of buff it and blend it out. This time I chose to show you how you can definitely do this technique without a grip mat like I did on the last card, but you can definitely see how the grip mat is handy for a few reasons. One is my hand is getting pretty inky here because I'm holding the die cut in place and so I'll have to keep cleaning my hand. So if you like to stay a little tidier, I recommend some sort of sticky mat. Okay, so I did white pigment ink on the edge of all of those die cuts. And now I'm coming in with Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Ink in the Picked Raspberry color. Now oxide inks have pigment properties and dye properties, so it's a unique ink. And because it has some pigment property to it, that pink ink will sit on top of the cardstock. If I used a regular pink dye ink, the pink on top of these green and blue cardstocks would just end up looking kind of brown. But because I put down some white ink first and I'm using pink oxide ink, you'll be able to see that pink color on the edges of these green and blue die cuts. 
So I'm not caring much about blending this per se because we're going to layer everything together. I just wanted to put down some white and then a little pink on top and then I'll go and put a bit of a darker color towards the center. Now you won't see much of that darker color but I did it just in case any of it would be peeking out. Again, not caring too much about blending because these will be all layered together. I will say I could have skipped the white pigment ink on the tips of the colored cardstock and just gone straight for the pink. But the pink stands out more if you put that white base underneath. So it's just an option. It takes just a few more minutes and definitely worth it in the end. By the way, you see I'm spending quite a bit of time trying to clean up my glasswork surface. Whenever I use ink on it, I gotta make sure it's clean so I don't like get my card bases or anything in it. That's the other advantage of having a sticky mat to ink on is you can keep that inky and pick that up and move it aside and your work surface will still be clean to complete your card. But again, think about the different tools out there and what might work best for you. I like to show different options. So I glued these all together. I made two of them with less layers and one with all the extra layers. Then for a sentiment, I'm using the Altenew Painted Blossom Bundle. There is a stencil, layering stencil set, there are coordinating dies, and there's a stamp set. And you can use these interchangeably. Now, I decided to only use the sentiment in today's video, but I wanted to give you a look at what those stencils look like too. I really like the sentiment that says, blessed to have a friend like you, and the just a note sentiment, which I'll use later. Now on the background of this card, I'll be using the Altenew Rustling Leaves press plates. Now these are meant to be used with a better press system, which I'm going to demonstrate with today. However, you can also use these plates to do foiling on a, like a glimmer machine. And you can use these plates to make an impression, which I'll show you later. And you just need a die cut machine for that. Now this press plate actually has coordinating dies and stencils available, but I'm just going to use the press plates alone. So this is a Spellbinders Better Press system. Love this thing, foolproof, and it gives really cool results. Now I like to put a piece of very thin, clear, recycled packaging either on the Better Press system or on my table while I ink it up. And let me show you why. Before I ink up the plate, I will add my cardstock to the clear plate that pops onto the platform. So there are little tick marks to show you where to put an A2 card panel, and I'm going to tape my dark cardstock there. I thought a dark cardstock would look great behind these succulents. Just using some temporary tape to hold it onto that clear plate. Now it's time to ink up this better press plate here. I'm using cloud white ink. It's the same white pigment ink I used earlier. Now you could use any colored ink and this press plate will give you great detail. Now I'll use that piece of plastic to help me lift this off without touching the ink and place it onto the magnetic portion of the better press system. Now I can pop the clear plate on top, which just has our cardstock on it kind of hovering above it, just kind of sitting above it. And when you run this through your Spellbinders die cut machine, it'll press the plate and the cardstock together, giving a little bit of an impression and that bright white ink. Now keep in mind it won't be solid white because white pigment ink really isn't very solid, but look how gorgeous that is. If you want that to be solid, just repeat the process. It's all there on that magnetic surface. You can just repeat it, but I decided to leave it as is. Now I'm going to ink up that plate again and move it to the bottom area. So I'm going to rotate it so that I have two impressions with the same plate to kind of cover most of my cardstock. So I still have my cardstock on the platform or on the plate there. I'm going to line it back up, just pop uh, right onto the little magnets in the four corners and run it through the die cut machine. If you've never seen the Better Press system, I love it, and I will link here in the description below and up on the top right to a video where I talk all about it. But keep in mind, you can use those same press plates to do foiling with a glimmer machine and to make an impression with a die cut machine, which I'll show you later on. So I trimmed that dark background down and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. And I'm adding my three little succulent plants to it along with my sentiment. I again added more of the crystal clear enamel dots 
really like these because they aren't too bulky. And then I thought it'd be fun in the little impressions that are on all of the petals of these flowers, or in this case, succulents. I'm just tracing in those little line impressions with a glitter pen, just so it gives a little bit of sparkle. You definitely don't need to do this. You could also use a white gel pen if you really want this line to stand out more. But I just thought this was a way to kind of make that line impression kind of pop out a bit and add a bit of sparkle. So here's a closer look and I think you can see the sparkle there a bit in the light. You can also see the impression we made with that press plate in the background with the white pigment ink. Again, you could have inked it and pressed it twice to get a brighter white, but I wanted a little more subtle. And you can see how I use pink on the edges of those die cuts to give it that succulent look. Okay, let's move on to our next card and completely change gears. This card has some stenciling and then a really easy way to add texture to your background. And it looks like fabric. It's fantastic. Doesn't show up well in the photo, but you'll see it here in a moment. Okay, I have a layering stencil set that's fantastic. This is a really easy to follow layering stencil that will create a floral cluster that fills the front of a card. So if you're looking for good, like um, full coverage stencil, layering stencil set that's not too hard to use, this is a good option. There is a coordinating die set available too. So I have a piece of white cardstock here that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I've lined up where I want my stencil to be. So I'm starting with the first stencil that does the base of the leaves. Now remember Alta New stencils come with a guide so you know what layers and how to use them but this is easy to do. The stencils are also numbered so I know this is the first one. So over this one I'm just applying a light amount of green ink and then I can easily line up the second stencil. It's easy to line up because the second stencil just adds detail to those solid flowers we just did. So you can see how easy it is to line up. And again, the sticky mat is holding my cardstock and the stencil in place. You can see how the stencil kind of suctions onto it, really holding it there. You don't need tape and you don't need to hold it with your fingers. So that means less mess. Now, I also put my ink pad onto that sticky mat and it also holds it there as I ink up my brush. And now we can move on to the third stencil. And again, this lines up perfectly with the first layering you did. So no guesswork there. Now it's time for the fourth stencil. And the four openings on here all create one of the flowers in the cluster. So just pick a color family for these four openings. Actually, there's a fifth opening there in the center. So it's easy to pop it in. See this one right there? That solid opening fits right in between the leaves there on the bottom right. Now I also have two pieces of extra blank stencil material that I put at the top that are masking off the rest of the card so I don't accidentally get ink on it. You could use scrap paper there, but I really like this blank stencil material because I can easily wipe it off and use it again and again. So there I moved over to the second opening. You don't even have to rotate your stencil around to see how it lines up. You just shift it over and you have your next layer. Now this will be a slightly darker color. Then move to the third one, and this will be an even darker color. So there are really pretty much four openings here. So I start with the first one being the lightest color. Then I go to the second one, which is the medium color. Then the third one, which is dark. And the fourth one, which is extra dark. And there's actually a little spot there in the middle just to add a super dark amount of ink, just to give that little bit of shadow. And look how beautiful that flower is. Now we're on stencil five, and this does the flower at the top. So I'll pick a color family. I'm doing corals for this. And I'm starting with the first opening, the biggest opening with the lightest color. And then watch, I just shift that stencil over. Don't need to rotate it and line that up. Now I'm gonna skip the stenciling of the second flower and of the third flower, but do know that the next stencil does that third flower. Very easy to figure out. This is one of the easier uh, layering stencil sets that creates a really elaborate look. Look how gorgeous that is. Really easy to line up and the guide is helpful too. Now you could leave this as is, it's beautiful, but I thought I'd add some texture to it that almost looks makes it look like it's quilted. This is the new Alta New Rustic Burlap Press Plate. Now this is meant to be used with the better press as I demonstrated before. However, you can also foil with it 
Or you can do what I'm doing here, which is make an impression with it using your die cut machine. Most die cut machines come with a flexible embossing mat. It's the gray flexible mat that you see here with my spellbinders. This allows you to make an impression with a die, or in this case, with a press plate. So I put my cardstock on that flexible embossing mat. Then I put this burlap press plate face down on it. And I just follow the sandwich that my Spellbinders machine comes with or recommends using for making an impression with the die, but I'm making an impression with my press plate instead. By using your press plate this way, you get much deeper impression. You don't get as much detail, but rather deeper impression, kind of like you would with an embossing folder. And look at that. I think that's beautiful. It looks like an old quilt or old fabric. I don't know. I just love it. And this is a look that you can do with a variety of stenciled backgrounds. So take any of your stenciled or stamped backgrounds and use something to add texture to it. An embossing folder would work also. Now I thought it'd be fun to add this on to a panel of glitter cardstock so some glitter was kind of peeking out the side. However, I didn't want to waste that big piece of glitter paper when most of the center would be covered. So I cut a big section out from the center. It's just an oval is the die that I had and I'll save that oval for another project. Then I can glue my floral panel onto it and you see the glitter around all four sides, but I didn't waste the glitter paper that would have been behind it. By the way, this is my absolute favorite glitter paper. This is Dazzling Diamond from Altenew. It comes in full sheets now and it's like a, a soft kind of champagne glitter. It just really works with everything. Die cuts very nicely and it doesn't rub off. I just love it. So I used the thanks that was from that floral die set that I used earlier in this video. I did the shadow from white and the thanks from that same glitter cardstock. I wanted the sentiment to be a little more subtle. That's why I didn't do black cardstock. Now that extra oval, I'm going to put in my little pouch here. I love these zipper pouches from Altenew where I keep all of my dazzling diamond glitter paper because I don't want to lose any of it. So here's a look at the completed card. You can see that fun texture that we got using that press plate with an embossing mat in our die cut machine and that beautiful stenciling. So if you have any layering stencil sets, try adding a texture to it using like a press plate or an embossing folder. And there you can see that beautiful dazzling diamond glitter paper. Okay, let's change gears. I told you I had a lot in this video. Now these cards, I've got a bunch of them here that use die cutting and some simple stamping, but I have a stamping trick for you that I think was really helpful in putting these cards together pretty quickly. Now this features the Altenew Mini Delight Plants and Vases stamp set and die set. So you can see the dies create little detail on the vases and the stamps go really nicely with it. So I'll use both on this card and I'll use this stamp set on a card later just for a sentiment. So once again, I went off and I did a bunch of die cutting and all of these die cuts are actually two die cuts glued together. So there's some dimension to them, but you could do one die cut if you prefer. Now, some of these flowers and leaves and the little hats are for cards that I'm doing later in this video, but I'm actually going to use some of those leaves on these cards too. So I did a bunch of die cutting, glued them together, and now we're ready to make a bunch of cards. Now these cards I wanted to be a little bit wider. So I am taking a piece of cardstock and folding it in half at five and a half inches. I'm doing a bunch of them at once. I will then fold along each of those so I have a folded piece of cardstock. Then I will use my trimmer and I'm going to cut these to be four and a half inches wide instead of four and a quarter. I just wanted it to be a bit wider so I could fit more vases across it. The re leftover piece, which is four by five and a half, I'll save for cards that I'm doing later in this video. Okay, so now I have my note cards that are four and a half inches wide by five and a half inches tall. I want to figure out where to put those little stamped leaves that you see coming out of the vases over there on the left. And this is the trick that I have for you. You could do this inside of a misty with any kind of clear sticky mat, or as I'm demonstrating today, using the clear sticky mat that comes in your stamp wheel. 
What I'm doing is I'm pulling up that sticky mat and putting my note card in the corner and then putting my sticky mat down on top of it. I'm going to take my three biggest uh, floral vases and I'm going to position them where I think I'll want them to be glued down. By doing the sticky mat on top of our cardstock, it holds those die cuts in place as I do some planning here because it kind of grips those die cuts. I then can take my first leaf image and place it where I want it coming out of that vase, put the lid of my stamp wheel down to grab that stamp, remove the die cuts, take my cardstock out from, or my note card out from underneath the sticky mat, and now we can stamp. I'm stamping with Lost Shadow Oxide Ink from Tim Holtz because this is the perfect soft gray color, and that was the look I was going for here. I like to double stamp. I'm a double stamper, so I stamp that twice, and then I can move on to the next note card and stamp it in the same place. By the way, I should mention that this card design was completely inspired by a mock-up that Altenew showed me for this stamp set. I just loved it and had to recreate it, and they gave me permission to do so. Okay, so once I've stamped that on all of those cards, I can take the card and put it back under that sticky mat. So you can see how easy it is to peel that sticky mat up thanks to that grid texture that's on the back of it. I can tuck my note card behind there. I'm gonna put my die cuts back in place just so I can position where my next leaf image will be. So this, again, just holds those die cuts in place so they're not moving around as we're doing this. It just gives that little bit of stick to hold it there. Now I'll place this leaf where I want it to come out of that, that little orange vase there close the door on or put down the lid of my stamp wheel, grab that stamp, move my card up to the front of the sticky mat and stamp this using the same Lost Shadow ink. Now, if you want these leaves to be more prominent, you could definitely use a darker green ink, but I really like the shadowy look of the leaves so that the focus is on those bright vases that will be on the bottom and the sentiment that I'll put on top of these leaves with black ink. Okay, so after I've stamped that on all of those, here's another great trick for using this large sticky mat or any kind of sticky mat. I put my card down and then I put my T-roller up against the bottom edge of it to make sure I have like a straight edge there. And what's nice is this sticky mat grips onto that T-roller and holds it there. I don't have to hold it there as I line up all these vases. I'm putting adhesive on the back of my these two vases and putting them close to the edge on both sides, right? Then I'll center the one there in the middle. Now the rest of the smaller vases go in between and I'll use foam squares to add those on top. And remember these die cuts are too thick, so they're strong enough that even if I use foam squares behind them, they won't get squashed too much in the mail. I just really liked how this sticky mat holds that T-roller down so I can make sure that these all go straight across my card. Or I could have put the T-roller kind of at an angle and it would hold it there and I could have an angled line of vases. So it's just another one of the advantages of having a sticky mat in your collection. And in this case, the bigger size was really handy. Now I can take this off of the sticky mat and cut off the edges of those vases that are hanging off the side. And by the way, this card design is excellent for using up scraps. You can just do whatever collection of vases that you want along the bottom. If you don't have vase dies like this, just look for maybe flower dies that you can use up scraps and do a border with. After I did all of my cards in the same way, I chose different sentiments to stamp with black ink right on top of the light gray stamping that we did. This particular one is from the Altenew Stamp and Paint Flower stamp set. This is really cool because you stamp this and then you paint the flowers on with watercolor. I'll be using that in a live soon, so stay tuned for that. But I just use the sentiment on this card. For several of the cards, I used a sentiment from that elegant tulip stamp set that I showed you earlier that says sending smiles across the miles. I just really like that and I thought it fit nicely there on top of our little leaf images. On this particular one, I used my glitter pen just to highlight some of the impressions that the vases have from the die. So that's a way to kind of make those patterns stand out. But really, I kept most of these pretty simple because I liked the simplicity of them. Now this one, instead of stamping the leaves, I used leaf die cuts from the hat die set that I'm about to use on my next card examples. So this one's all die cutting with a stamp sentiment. 
And then I have a few others. I did different colors that I thought would work well for some of my friends. One of my guy friends loves green and blue, so those are going to him. And this one, I used the Just a Note from the stamp set that I showed you earlier. And it's nice to have a collection of these cards ready to go to different people. By the way, I used a Versamarker pen to make parts of the pattern on those die cuts stand out. And remember, these cards are all a bit bigger. They're four and a half by six and a half. So you'll have to use a bigger envelope. I like to use A6 envelopes. I'll link to a source for those below, or you could use five by seven. All right, now let's move on to my last two cards that feature this adorable hat die set. I just like that it was different and it made for a simple card. And I'm using the leftover note cards from the last set of cards. So these note cards are a little more narrow, but I'll explain that as we go. So this is the Altenew Lovely Floral Hat Die Set. I love that this is different. And it's one of those that's really easy to line up thanks to that keyhole system. So I did a bunch of die cutting off screen. Again, I glued two die cuts thick so they have a little bit of dimension and a little bit stronger than one layer. And then I'm using some ink just to add that bit of shading to them. This doesn't have to take long, but I feel like it makes a big difference in the end. You could spend more time on the shading and being very intentional about where you add the darker color or where you add the highlights. But me personally, I just like to assemble so I don't spend too much time uh, inking up the die cuts, but you definitely could. Now this time I'm using a darker color ink and adding just darker color towards the center of my flowers. I'm not adding any white pigment ink to this one in particular because I really wanted bold color. I also use my Altenew Detail Blending Brushes to add a bit of color to the center of these tiny die cuts. I find the sticky mat really helpful when using little die cuts like these. And then for the leaves, I come in with darker green and I put it kind of along the stem of these little sprigs here and then at the base of the leaves. Now I can glue the layers together. There is the keyhole system, but really these are easy to figure out. And I'm using my Gina K Connect in a fine tip bottle. I know that'll dry and hold very well. Now we can add our little flowers and leaves onto our hat. Now this is very easy to do on your own. You can kind of create your own little flower cluster here or you could skip the flowers and just have the hat. I personally just kind of followed the guide that comes with the die set. You know, when you're not feeling creative, just follow along with the example that they have. You know it's going to work out well because that's how the designers had it in mind in the first place. Now this note card is left over from what I cut earlier. So these are four inches wide, a little narrow, by five and a half inches tall. So I'm going to let my hats hang off the edges. I used the thanks from the first floral die set I showed you at the beginning of this video and stamped to a special person underneath it. Now this I will put into an A6 envelope, which is a bit bigger because I have so much hanging off the edge there, but I love the look of that. I really like how much that darker ink makes all of those die cuts pop. Now on this one, I did some darker ink and I did some white pigment ink. So you can see how you've got those highlighted areas. Now normally I usually just leave my die cuts plain colored cardstock, but you can see the big impression you can make by adding a bit of ink. And with a large sticky mat, you can line up a bunch of die cuts and do a bunch at once. All right, now before we go, I just wanted to let you know that I plan to go live hopefully this Thursday afternoon, and I'm going to be learning how to watercolor with the help of these stamp sets that are designed to do a bit of watercolor with stamping. Uh, Jen from Altenew, she's one of the co-founders of Altenew, is going to teach me how to do so using these products, and I'm hoping you'll join me because she says it's really easy and a great way to learn. I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm guessing I'll have a special offer just for all of you, so be sure to check it out. In the meantime, you can find the supplies I used for these cards in my description below. I will also link to a couple other related videos at the end. I thank you for watching this. I know it was a bunch of random things, but you know, sometimes you just want to sit down, create, and learn some new tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon, and have a great day.